All right, uh, we got a Nissan 1F1 uh, 15LV. Uh, the problem with this is an extended crank, uh, intermittent start, no start, um, and of course a check engine light. And we got a code for a P0335, which is a crankshaft position sensor circuit. Uh, a little bit of history the cam and crank sensors have been replaced and we're just gonna go through the steps so right now I am just back probed on the crankshaft position uh, signal wire which is if you have a Nissan uh, unit uh, this gray connector it would be the white with green trace all right and we're gonna crank it up it does start and we're gonna look at the signal that that sensor is producing. You heard the extended crank. All right, right now there is no signal. I don't wanna run this thing too long because I got the fan off. I don't want it to run hot. And you can see that we are reading uh, about three volts. That's supposed to be a 12 volt on off square wave. All right, Put a little more time on it. You can see the, the remnants of the signal. See if I lower, uh, if I lower my vertical scale, you can see the remnants of a square wave, but it's nowhere near what it's supposed to be. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to check powers and grounds at that sensor and if all that checks out we're gonna replace that sensor all right i got the sensor out of its home as you can see that green wire that is the power feed is supposed to be uh, battery voltage comes from one of the egi1 or egi2 relays uh, i completely i forget but i'm gonna make sure we have a good power feed like i said we're supposed to have battery voltage on this wire so I'll turn the key on He's on. All right, and adjust this. And as you can see, sorry about the glare, got about 12.8 volts. So my power feed is good. All right. Uh, next check I'm going to do is I'm back probing to that yellow wire. That's the signal wire. Now the sensor is out of its home. Uh, if you were going to do this with the sensor installed, um, this reading would vary depending on the position of the uh, reluctor, what that sensor reads. All right, but right now with it out of its home and away from possible is anything that's magnetic right there and I should be reading close to battery voltage and as you can see right here I'm reading that 3.2 volts all right now that 3.2 volts uh, on a good well on a good sensor that's supposed to be battery voltage like I said depending on the position of the reluctor or whether or not you have it out of its uh, out of its spot all right so just one more check we got to check the sensor ground because without a good ground or a bad connection on the ground, we would have, uh, <clears throat> uh, we could have low voltage, all right? Uh, not necessarily in open ground. In open ground, we would have continuously high voltage, all right? So just going to move it over. All right, so now I'm in the ground circuit. And as you can see, we are reading millivolts. If I lower my scale, get a little bit more detail, about 40 millivolts, which is perfect on the, on the center ground. You know, anything under 80 or 100. Now that voltage would elevate with uh, the engine cranking because it started drawing uh, so much current. So my powers and grounds are good. I'm going to replace that sensor and I'm going to redo these checks. All right, 
So that is a known good sensor. It's not new, but it's known good. And I'm back probed into the signal wire. And like I was saying, depending on the position of the reluctor or if the sensor is out of its home, um, that voltage should be fairly close to battery voltage, which we have right now. Voltage is a little off because that battery is weak, but we're going to put this I'm going to install the sensor and uh, that code, uh, we're going to clear the codes and we should see an on off 12 volt square wave. Okay, new sensor is installed. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear these codes. This is a, uh, it's a factory tool. Sometimes you can find these on uh, eBay. Uh, I believe it, it, it's a Hitachi uh, 2000. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive. If you do a lot of K-series uh, uh, or you work on a lot of K-series uh, type forklifts, this is this is a pretty good tool. So I'm just going to erase them. Yes. All right, and just make sure they're gone. Okay, no codes present. No data display. Now, contrary to uh, popular belief, uh, and it depends on the system, but these engines will run obviously without a crank signal. Uh, however, without the cam signal, these things will not fire. You'll have no spark, no injection pulse. All right, so. Back probe once again on my crankshaft position sensor signal wire. I'm gonna crank it up. All right, sorry about that. Uh, apparently that sensor made a liar out of me and I thought that was a known good um, that sensor is also defective as you can see it actually had the opposite issue um, when you saw that the voltage was staying high all right on um, and you saw the remnants of a square wave but it was not pulling down to zero that eventually would have gave us a diagnostic trouble code and truth be told I should have known something was up by the extended crank. All right, I I have a brand new sensor uh, that, from our parts department, and I'm going to crank it up and show you what you're supposed to see. All right, so let's just now that's what you're supposed to see. Got an on off square wave, stop it. These uh, dips where there's a space in between the next set of pulses, that is top dead center. And as you can see, we are reading battery voltage and that sensor is pulling it down all the way to basically ground, half a volt. All right, so, and you noticed the response that it takes to uh, start up. Relatively, relatively quick, couple cranks. All right, so um, that's it for, uh, for this particular video and this particular issue. Thank you.